Hey everyone, I'm Jesse McCollum, Brain Ambassador for Everlast Welders. Today we're gonna sit down, I'm gonna show you what is actually going on with Advanced AC Pulse and what it does while you're welding. All right, so today we're running a PowerTig 210 EXT. Now this is the smallest EXT that Everlast makes. So for welding a 3 16 or quarter inch plate, this machine is going to be underpowered. But going through our TIG pulse settings, standard AC, DC pulse, this is what everybody wants to know about advanced AC. Using advanced AC, I'm gonna show you how you can use a 210 amp machine to weld quarter inch or even thicker material. Now, before I show you the advanced AC pulse settings on the machine, I wanna go over to the whiteboard and show you guys what's actually going on with your waveform. So let's head over there and I'll try to explain it. All right, now we're over at the whiteboard so we can see what's going on here. So you can see we still have our electrode positive, electrode negative, just like we're running a regular AC waveform. Since we're on a 210 EXT, we're just gonna call our max amperage on both EP and EN at 200 amps each. So on advanced AC pulse, you're actually switching between your standard AC waveform, which still has your balance. As you can see, I've kind of drawn out here like a 30, 35% balance, your advanced square wave and your frequency settings. That's your on time. Your background amperage then switches to DC electrode negative, which is straight DC like you're welding stainless or mild steel. Now, most of the time, if you're running DC electrode negative on aluminum, you need to use a helium mix or else it's super dirty. And it's still a really fast and dirty process. But you get a lot more penetration on DC electrode negative. So then, after you come off your DC electrode negative, it goes back to your regular AC waveform. So this would be on the pulse, this is one hertz or one cycle. So when you're setting the pulse hertz, you're setting how many times per second you switch between regular AC and DC electrode negative. So we're gonna go to our TIG pulse settings area, go right past standard to advanced AC pulse. So now we're set up to where we can adjust our on time, background, and our pulse frequency for advanced AC pulse only. So our pulse time on, that is a percentage. So we want a 50-50 balance. So we basically want our on time and our background time to be the exact same. So we set it to 50%. Now we go to the pulse amps percentage. Now this is a percentage of our, of our on time amperage. So we're gonna go all the way to 100%. This represents our DC electrode negative side of the pulse which is where we get all of our penetration from. So we want maximum penetration, so we set it to 100%. Next, we set our pulse frequency. This is Hertz, which is pulses per second. So we're gonna go ahead, and I like 1.3 Hertz, which is 1.3 pulses per second. This is slow enough that you have enough time to dip on the AC part of the, the pulse wave. Now, because we're running this 210 EXT, even though we're on advanced AC, we still need to turn the machine all the way up. We've got some quarter inch plate, we're gonna do some butt welds, and I've got some quarter inch square tube that we're gonna weld up so you guys can see the, uh, the penetration benefits of advanced AC pulse. After we do the advanced AC, we're gonna do some regular AC at 210 amps, show you guys the difference in penetration and how the puddle reacts. All right, here we're lighting up on the advanced AC pulse on this quarter inch. Uh, square tube so you can see wait on it just a little bit you can actually see where I was talking about the wave change between your regular AC and then straight DC and so it's on that straight DC you can kind of see that uh, the oxide layer will kind of start to crackle and then it hits the AC and kind of blows it away and then that's when we can dip our filler rod so I'm dipping about every other AC pulse and what that does is it allows me to get a little more heat into the material as I move it along and you only wanna dip on the AC side of your pulse because the filler rod burns in a lot better and a lot cleaner on the AC side than on the uh, straight DC. So you have to kind of time it and do every other, every other AC pulse. And once you get going and we start getting some heat in, you can see I start dipping on every AC pulse just because it is starting to get pretty hot and I'm having to jam a lot of filler rods. So it's mainly me trying to keep this thing together and keep the bottom from falling out, which there's a, a couple runs on this cube where 
it got hot enough that I, I really needed to switch over to an eighth inch filler because I was, I was really struggling to jam enough filler rod in that weld pool to keep it together. All right, so we just got done doing a couple advanced AC runs. You can see inside the tube, we've got some pretty serious penetration. Now we were running maybe a 1 16th gap on this quarter inch box tubing. And there was a couple of these places where it was burning so hot, I had trouble keeping up with it. I probably could have switched over to eighth inch rod and been a little more consistent on my weld bead, but it just, it got so hot that it was actually, I was jamming rod in so fast, it was hard to keep up. So you can see we got really good penetration in there. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same, same fit up, same material, regular AC, and we'll see a pretty significant difference between these two cubes. So now we're gonna go back to TIG Pulse off. So this is straight AC. We're gonna run the same exact settings, our hertz, our balance, and we're gonna show, show the difference between the two on this quarter inch material. All right, here we are back on this uh, quarter inch thick square tubing. We're running regular AC now, same settings uh, as far as hertz and uh, balance. And you can see it's taken a lot longer to establish the puddle. It's a little bit lazier. Um, you can see it's not trying to sink down like it was on the advanced AC when we were running that. And I'm not having to really jam rod in just because it, it can't get hot enough to really start sinking in. So you can see all the way, it's, this is a much colder well. Even kind of waiting on it, trying to, trying to sink it in, it's still not really trying to, uh, to sink down for us. So a much colder weld. All right, here's the top sides. You can see this is the, the regular AC. It's much colder. They're a little bit shinier just because we are getting a lot more of that cleaning action. So it is a cleaner weld than the advanced AC pulse, but definitely a lot colder. You can actually see inside the cube here, we ran one bead here of the advanced AC pulse just to give a, a real good side-by-side. But this material was already heat soaked from that advanced AC run we did. And then we did three more regular AC runs and still no penetration. We even opened the gap up. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera. We really opened this gap up and still couldn't get it to burn through. So definitely a lot colder than our advanced AC pulse. I've got a 325 EXT. There's not much I can't weld regular AC with that thing. But some of you guys that have a 210 or a 255 EXT and are trying to weld quarter inch or 3 8 plate, the advanced AC pulse feature could be a real lifesaver for you. So try it out. Uh, always feel free to hit me up and you know ask any questions you want. I'm on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm Jesse McCollum, brand ambassador for Everlast Welders. Weld mean, weld green.